Okay, let's try this again. Am I am I right side up? Really? You're not looking at me? Okay. There you are. Look okay? Okay, let's try this again. Oh, perfect. Am I, am I right side up? Yay! How did I get that wet? Okay, so I'm working with uh, three quarters of an ounce balls. Probably right those up there. Wrap up the ones I'm not using. Ready to rock and roll. So for those of you who haven't seen my video before, this is my little mini wheel. I uh, ordered it on eBay, and you can check out my page for a link to where it's uh, where a link to where it's being sold. It's under thirty-five dollars delivered. And um, the features that I like are that it has a a reversible switch. So this is the off position. Up is counterclockwise. Down is clockwise. So I like to throw clock, uh, counterclockwise. It has a larger head than some of the, the little wheels. And it has a um, AC plug. It's not a USB plug. On the plug, it has a... I'm all tangled up over here. It has a, a speed control on the, on the plug. It's a rheostat. So it's got some pretty good torque. It's easy to clean up. It's... Um, for under $35 is amazing. So we're going to get started. A uh, couple of features that I'm trying out this time are a smaller amount of clay. So last time I was working with an ounce. Now I'm working with three quarters of an ounce. Hopefully that'll be easier. And this is super soft clay. Um, this is my uh, studio stoneware from my own recipe. And I had it mixed at Paoli Clay and he made it super wet. Like if I wanted to throw on my proper wheel, I have to wedge some moisture out of it, otherwise it's it's sticky, sticky wet. Um, but this is exactly what we need for the small wheel. Um, I'm trying some. I'm gonna try some little tar paper bats. They're tiny. Look, they're tiny little. Um, so this fits almost perfectly. And how I managed that was this thing here. This is the end of a biscuit tube. Um, and I, I saw that after we had some not biscuits. Um, uh, cinnamon rolls. And uh, I saw that after we had some cinnamon rolls and I said, scoop, that's mine. It's almost like a, a mental disease. Like you see everything, how it can relate to your pottery. So I took this and I traced it and um, made these little tar paper bats. So we'll see how that works. Another potential for failure. Um, I was also thinking I could use this as a mold for... Um, uh, plaster if I wanted to do any little plaster bats. So we'll see. It's just a smidge smaller than the, the actual wheel head. But it, there we go. I thought, I thought I'd use that next. I'll get the wheel messy first and then and then I'll stick this down. Hi Sue! So what I have um, today to to try, I, I've thrown with this once before. So I'm not an expert. Um, I, uh, I know that I can throw a little bowl, so what I wanted to try was uh, trimming it. So I have a heat gun. This is a heat gun meant for paper crafts, for, for drying glue or paint or um, embossing. So it's, it's a little uh, lower temperature than, a, than one of the, uh, the paint stripper guns, but it's still really hot, like it'll melt plastic. Um, and I also have paintbrushes. And some colors. Oh, where did I put my colors? Oh, there. So what I did is I have um, I bought one of those kits of uh, little two ounce jars of um, velvet underglazes, uh, Amico. And uh, so I have twelve. I have a dozen. And uh, 
rather than bringing home 12 jars from the studio, I took this little thing, which, um, gosh, I think I got, I paid $1.99 for three or four of them um, a couple of years ago. And uh, I just put a little bit of my different colors in here. So I have, you know, a whole bunch of colors to, to choose from. I got the primaries and a couple extras, just for fun. I wanted to do what the YouTubers, if you've seen the mini wheels where they, they throw something and then they heat it, heat it and they trim it and they paint it all in one deal, I wanted to try that. Um, so here I've got six colors in black. So that's a, a synopsis of what I'm going to try and do and let's see how, how far I get. Um, so let's turn. All right, good. So I'm on. Ready to go. And stick this down. So I thought I'd start with a couple of bowls and see how that works. Um, let me know if you want to see my tools. I, I showed my tools in the, the first video I did. I made a bunch of them or I re repurposed them. Can you see? Can you see everything okay? Can you see the wheel okay? Because I've got all of the, um, everybody's, uh, everybody that's watching. Should I put it down on the table maybe? No, oh, Mom. Just doing other things. Yeah, it's all the way down at the bottom of my screen here. I'm going to lower it and see what you think. That that works. I can see a lot more. That's where I'm at. Oh, okay. There it's really is a lag. How how long is the lag? Okay, so 10 seconds-ish. All right, that's good to know. A bit more speed. I'm still trying to dial in what kind of speed I need. So you can hear how it strains the but it, it, I'm not stopping it by any means. Hi, Heather. Heather, have you seen me do pottery before? I can't remember seeing you tune in. Open this up. And really, how thick should the bottom be? That's another thing I'm going to have to think about is scale. That's probably enough. And here in my dining room with the uh, locked down. Right. Okay, Linda, let me see if I Without a, a better setup, it's going to be hard to see. You're going to have to see all of me and a little bit of the wheel. <laughs> so the thing about this wheel is that when I'm pushing on it, it's, it's pushing the wheel around. So I find I'm having to brace it with my, my fingers as I push on the clay, which I'm sure is not going to be an issue 
until as long as I get until like after I get used to it, you know. I don't, Heather. I don't want the chat to go away because uh, that's really why I'm here is just to spend some time with some other people. I'm going crazy. The whole um, lockdown stuff where I just see uh, I see Tony and I see the people I work with. And I see strangers when I get to do grocery shopping once a week, and that's it. So, this is um, sanity preservation right here. Hmm. And get in there with my, my tool. Oh, that worked. Look how much bigger it got. Good first try. It's kind of wobbly, but let's see how what we can do next. I'm gonna do a quick wet trim on this. Thanks, Heather. Okay, cool. All right, so now I'm going to try the heat gun. It's exciting. Kind of like watching clay dry. Oh, that does dry fast. Let me set that down so it doesn't burn anything. Here, I'm going to get this out of the way so it doesn't get hit the... There we go. Alright, so now let me do some trimming. It's about as slow as I can make it. Whoa! <laughs> Alright. All is not lost. Here, I thought I would trim it while it was stuck to the wheel, but I, apparently the heat gun dried it out so much it just popped right off. So now I need to trim it the way I would trim on the wheel, like on the proper size wheel. Let's 
give this a try. Won't stick. Help! Okay, so I, it's pretty easy to see that there's a bit of a learning curve with this thing. Um, I'm a legit potter if you don't know me. Um, I have my own studio. I teach classes. And I wouldn't say that uh, I'm the best potter in the world, but I do know how to throw. And this is a challenge. <laughs> Boys and girls. Let's try it that way. Are you stuck? It would greatly help if this was centered. I really do want to have just one pot to show for this all. One thing I don't know about these little electric motors is if it hurts them to slow them down because it's really helpful right now for me to slow this down because even on its slowest setting it's just a bit too fast for some of the trimming I want to do. And this might not even be the best trimming tool. Experience will give me guidance on that, I'm sure. <laughs> it's so uneven. One of the things about uh, learning something new like this is having compassion for my students because uh, it's easy to forget how difficult these skills are to learn. Do you know? That doesn't suck too bad. All right, so I'm just going to use my tool here to clean up this. I'm going to use this tool. I'm going to clean up the, the bottom edge here. <coughs> and then. Now for the part that's so wonderful when they do it on the videos. Now bring this over here.
and let's put some yellow on. Use up the stuff I have in my brush. It looks way better on screen than it does to my eyeballs. That would work a lot better if that was centered. Anyway, there's my little bowl. I'll probably scrap this one, assuming I'm able to make better ones. But that is leather hard now, and I could go ahead and do designs on it if I wanted to. But I'm going to set it aside for right now and do another one. So this was um, three quarters of an ounce of clay and it's white stoneware, very wet, uh, very soft. So um, I don't have to put a lot of pressure on it on the wheel to center it. There's my little little trimmed bottom, not my best work. So let's give it a, give it a try for another ball. Nice thing is you can just dump the trimmings out. <laughs> my paint out of the way. Okay, so this time I'm going to do something a little more complicated and try doing a, a little bottle. I think it would be a lot more exciting to do that paint decoration on a, on a little bottle. So i go ahead and do that. Oh, I was going to use, here, um, I was going to use my tar paper bat. Let's give that a try. So for tar paper, you usually put a slurry on the wheel. So I have some wet clay that I trimmed away. So that's what it looks like. And I pre soaked these guys. Put it on there. Stick it down as well as I can. I'm using my sponge. And press it down. Well, it really doesn't want to. I wonder if I need more clay. See, I'm making these mistakes so you don't have to, right? It's my story and I'm sticking to it. One thing they don't tell you in the fancy videos is that this takes about as long 
to do as it takes to throw a large piece. Alright, so I put a thicker coat of, of heavier clay on there. Try and use my little D rib. And this is so um, I can remove something that I make without having to disturb the bottom of it. And I'll have a nice, perfectly flat bottom. Alright. Let's try that now. Now, if anybody who's watching this actually knows how to do this, uh, pointers and advice is always welcome. Anything that I'm doing on here could be done off the hump. If you don't know what that is, it's just where you take a lump of clay and you center it on the wheel. And then you pull up a little chunk on the top and you work with that. That's a skill like anything else. It takes practice to get good at. Um, the advantage of having a little mini wheel is I'm at home on my dining room table and I can do this and then when I am done doing this I can put all this stuff in a box and stick it away or I can take it to my friend's house or you know whatever if you're not committing to a lot of, uh, a lot of space or expense. I think if I really like doing this I will go ahead and get a better quality mini wheel. This cost under $35. It's a nice test. Um, you can get them, you know, $100, $200, depending. And it was made in China, so I could get one made in the United States, much better quality for, for a couple hundred dollars. It would probably last my lifetime and my grandchildren's lifetime. Right. I'm thinking a bit more effort centering this because I want my bottle to be not wobbly. Centered a tall, tall piece of clay, and going in with this stick, it's rounded. It's like a sculpture stick. So I hope that I'm not missing out on comments. Are there any extra comments? Are you still watching? No, I'm just doing other things. It's been a while since I've seen a comment, and which is okay. People, people aren't commenting. That's all right. But if people are commenting, I, I want to be able to see it.
No new comments. Okay. Alright, so this is going to be... In there. Ah, I get really thin right there. The old fashioned way. Right. Hi, Nancy. It's good to see you. Not supposed to do that. All right. So Nancy, this is what I'm doing to preserve my sanity. What are you doing to preserve yours? I might need to get more of them. Monocles. So I feel like my eyesight is a bit of a hamper. Uh -oh. well, that works. That's nice. Hmm. That is not terrible. Nancy, have you been here for very long? This is the first thing I made. Trimmed. That was an adventure. Okay, so now...
like a little jar. Hey, good on you for making masks. We need way more of them than there are people to sew. Well, kudos. Let me know if you're selling some. Um, I, I bought three from a place on, on, e on Etsy, uh, handmade masks, but um, I'd kind of like to have more so that I don't have to do laundry more often than, than, I, want, than I normally do laundry. It seems wasteful. Um, these are three quarters of an ounce. Uh, you'll see that you'll see the next one, but it's just you know that big. I think that's probably good enough to trim. And my other trimming tool wasn't working very well. I'm going to see if I can find a, a better trimming tool. Let's pick that up later. I'm going to try this one. It's round. And... This is a, a set that I bought on uh, Amazon or eBay when I was taking my uh, uh, college classes. Uh, it came with a, a set of sculpture tools. Not everything in here is original, but it's a great little case for keeping little tools together. All right. It's more smoothing it than it is trimming it, really. Ooh, that's better. A bit much, actually. Well, I told you you might see some fail. Mama, I broke it. Well, good thing there's more clay in the world. There's my trimming stick. So I just get that off of there, and I can go ahead and use my um, I have a tar paper bat on there right now. Tiny little tar paper bat. So I'll just go ahead and center another piece of clay. So now I know what not to do. Not so sure on what to do, but I am narrowing down not what not to do. Three quarters of an ounce. Let's try jar number two.
I tell you, I couldn't have had better timing with this little wheel. I ordered it March 1st or 2nd, and it came in on the 13th. Maybe maybe I ordered it a little sooner than that. It came from China, slow the slow boat, but it came right as we were getting the uh, the beginning of the closed the shutdowns. I think it came the week that uh, restaurants were shut down in Illinois, right before, uh, yeah, right before non-essential other non-essential businesses were shut down. Figuring out how much pressure to put on is kind of a challenge. Um, this clay is super soft. I wouldn't want to use stiffer clay. Okay, so I'm going to center that lower than I did with my last bottle, and, and then I can kind of scooch in the bottom once I have it opened up. That might work better for me. No, it's variable speed. Um, let me show you. So this here is the on and off. So there's off. Down is going clockwise. Off and up is counterclockwise. And then over here, and my cord's kind of all tangled up, but over here, um, this is my speed control, so it's just a rheostat in line with the plug-in. This one's plugged in; it's AC power. Um, so this is this is my speed. So I can go. I don't know if you can see. Let me turn it on. I don't know if you can tell. It really going much faster. You, you really can't tell, but it goes super fast down to down to reasonably slow. I'm sorry, I'm all tangled up here with my heat gun and everything. I'm just on my dining room table. It's hardly an ideal setup. Okay, so there's my, my bottle form opened up. Getting that clay up from the bottom is a real challenge. Wish my fingers were smaller. throw. Alright, I want to do one more height pull. Oh, 
if I push this in. a lot more height than what I got off the other one. phone here on the screen because my hands are so big it's hard for me to see the pot most of the time wow this is way easier than doing it on a big pot Here's where you really want it to be slower, and it won't go slower. Please, 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 I don't want to wreck this one. Oh, I wrecked it. Nancy, are you still here? I remember something you taught me. I'll be right back. Still too soft. Darn it. So much fail. Maggie loves me even if I fail. So that's a problem with having super soft clay. Another fail. However, this is going in my in my toolkit. I'm so glad you were here for that. If you're still here. If not, I hope you see it. All right. I don't think I can recover this. Also, all I've got is this stupid rag. Need a big sponge. Okay. A little bit.
I think that a lot of people that do this um, mustn't do really thin walls. I don't know, does anybody else here do miniatures? I'm kind of trying to keep it proportional to the piece, but I'm finding that it, the walls are super weak. Or maybe I should just dry it out more often. So it's such a small amount of clay. That made a huge difference. It's not floppy anymore, and it was, I don't know, 30 seconds with the heater. I also think I need a better pin tool. The tools that I have right now aren't very sharp, so next time uh, I do this, I'll stick a sewing pin in a cork and we'll try that. I think we'll still get a little bottle. We we'll definitely need to get rid of that top. I'm pretty sure we're dealing with less than half an ounce of clay right now. <coughs> How's that look? I just like normal, I gouge it with my thumbnail. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay. Let's try that trimming business again. I wonder. 
This is a bit closer to what I normally use for trimming. Let's give that a try. Well, that's not terrible. I'm going to undercut that just a little bit. Ooh, ooh look at that. I really didn't want it to get off center. It makes it harder to paint. Liking that. I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it. I'll dry it off a little bit and put some colors on it. Really doesn't take much. Okay, colors. All right, you know, I think I want to do this one black. <laughs> these are um, velvet underglazes, so I've just put in one of these little uh, paint pots. I think I got them for a couple of bucks uh, at a craft store. They're really inexpensive. off my brush. The YouTubers make this look a lot more elegant. Oh, that's fun. Okay, the nice thing is you could, um, make these and dry them out with the heat gun and bisque them the same day. There's n there's nothing there. I've got a tiny little uh, test kiln that I've never used. And, I might bring, and it just plugs into a socket. It kind of looks like a, it's shaped like a beehive. And it's got the elements embedded into it. Did co didn't cost me very much. 
Um, and I, I thought, yeah, it would come in handy for making beads or something. I might bring that home and, and, and play with that. I'll, I'll let you guys in on that if, if that's something that I end up doing. Um, there, I think they're still available. It's like a Paragon test kiln or a Paragon jewelry kiln, enameling kiln um, sort of thing. All right, should be. Talk less, work more. One of my little tools. Uh, can you? That I made. I'm always trying things that don't work. So be prepared for me to try something here that doesn't work. Didn't work. get that cleared off. Oh, and then maybe another color. green. that should probably do another line up here. Hands are too big. Folks, it's a little bottle. Um, and I, uh, for those of you that didn't, uh, that weren't here when I first got, when I first started this, um, let me just clean up this bat a little bit. I have a tar paper bat under this. There we go. 
So I'm just going to pick that up. Get under it if I can. There. So I've raised up that corner there. And I'll just go under it with my wire tool. And there is my tiny little bottle. See? So I'll wait until this dries a little bit on the bottom and I'll just peel off the, the tar paper. And then it'll have a nice perfect flat bottom. So, so far I have um, used four balls of clay. No, three balls of clay. And had one catastrophic failure. This one was almost a failure. It would have been bigger. So I think this, I think this ended up being like half an ounce. Because um, I started out with three quarters of an ounce and, and cut off quite a bit. And this one was half an ounce. Sorry. Uh, three quarters of an ounce. This was a full size. Um, and this one was cl closer to half an ounce. So and, and that one I trimmed on the bottom. I'll try another one like that. Um, this was hard to do. So I, I wouldn't say that this was uh, the easiest step. I probably should have done the, these guys first because this was easier. Yay! That is cute. Cute! Yeah. I like it's graffito. Like now that I've, I've got the colors on it, I go in and do some carving. Happy Potter. All right, so... This um, is my clay pad. It's pretty dry, so I'm going to wet it and put on another, another uh, bat. Those of you that are here, um, speak up if there's something you want to see me do. Not an expert. Uh, you would see me figuring it out. So um, it's not like I can really be teaching at this point, but if you see me doing something and it messes up, you know not to do it that way. It's, it's a value of that. And we get to hang out doing clay things together, which is really the value of it for me. Going bonkers with this whole uh, shelter in place and bad news all the time. So I'm just putting down a clay pad with some goopy clay I've got left over. Kind of like what you do in your throwing bucket. Just put down some really thick slip. I tried it earlier with um, less and it didn't work. So talk to me. Who else has done a mini wheel? I know there was a number of folks who ordered this wheel or a very similar wheel on Clay Buddies. Um, pop up and say hi if you're if you're here from Clay Buddies. Because if you've got this wheel and um, and you want to play with it, maybe we could do like a I don't know. What are people doing with the conference calls right now where everybody's on a video together? like for school. Maybe we could hook up with something like that and we could all do it together. Um, again, not like a teaching thing. I can help anybody, but I'm not an expert with this yet. So, all right, so there's my, there's my clay pad. And I just dumped water on the... <laughs> I've got a piece of linoleum on my uh, kitchen table here. So I am uh, taking my... my uh, tar paper, bat, and that I've soaked, it's moist, and I'm going to put it on here. Take my little D-rib, smooth it down. So keep in mind that this is a mirror image, so what I'm doing um, is backwards to what you're seeing. 
So I am throwing counterclockwise and my hands are always working th between three and six on the wheel. Okay. Um, I'm moisten my tar paper bat. Put this down. All right, so this is um, the fourth ball. Uh, two of the three previous ones resulted in actual pieces that are finished. So that's not bad. Two out of three ain't bad. There ought to be a song about that. Posture is important. My shoulders are starting to hurt, so I think I need to brace myself a little bit more. It's important not to use too much water because it just sprays everywhere. I was thinking about um, if I want to really get into this and, and just produce piece after piece, I think I'll get a plastic uh, bowl and cut the front out of it and, and set it behind the wheel so that it catches all of the, the muck because there's, there's clay spread all over my dining room table and it just makes a nuisance. We're almost at the point where I can do this outside. We've got uh, 50 degree high today predicted. Part of what you're seeing is me trying different ways of centering. You know, that doesn't suck. Ooh, that really works. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm pushing with my left thumb, and I have my, so I'm, I'm pushing, pushing with my left thumb, and I have my index finger on top of it, so I'm pushing in and pushing down. So I push in and let it come up, and then I push down and let it come out, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah, and I'm bracing myself on the far side of the wheel. I'm going to try and make another bottle because I think those are much prettier than the bowls. I've actually uncentered the... What do I do about that? I think I'll just go on about my business. <coughs> the uh, tar paper bat has shifted. So let's see what happens if we keep throwing with that. That's the kind of thing that makes some people dizzy. I'm 
wonder if I can go in with this and flatten that. Oh yeah. That makes a nice bottom. Last time I did it with my pinkies. Let's see if I can do it with my pinkies again. Hi, Jana. Only got two folks watching. I saw like 14 at one point. That's okay. It's not quantity, it's quality. of great things. Now I'm getting fancy. Alrighty. So I'm trying for another jar. Pardon me. So, this lockdown business, I'm not okay. I'm feeling very stressed out. And I've seen a lot of people in the same boat where, okay, we've got all this free time. We should be getting our garden ready, doing spring cleaning, catching up on art projects. And really all I can do is barely get by. Like, I'm trying not to watch all of the bad news, but I just can't help it. I'm trying not to think about all of my friends and family that are in harm's way. Can't help it. Mad. I want to yell at people. So this week I uh, had my fill of going to the uh, gas station to sign for my fuel at work. I drive for a living. Or I drive. I drive. Uh, it's one of my jobs, the only one that's left right now, and uh, have to get gas every day. And I go into the gas station, and there's somebody picking up a, a soda, lottery ticket, 
pack of cigarettes. Just like everything is fine. And I'm in there because I have to be in there. And uh, it's very frustrating to me. So um, my boss let me get my fuel at a different place where I can use the company card so I don't have to go into the gas station. I've ordered some masks. Now I'm going to try and do that without it spinning. So I've ordered some cloth masks so that when I go out to the grocery store, I'm not breathing on people and they're not breathing on me. I can wear them at work. I wonder... So oh, this is a great way to, to relax. I'm not looking at the computer, not looking at bad news. If you're watching me, you're not looking at the computer and not looking at bad news, hopefully. I know that me flopping pots isn't bad news, but it's more entertaining than, than current events. You try a really thin neck. Wobbly. Got a bit of torque in there in the neck. I can't do much about that. I wonder. D-rib to the rescue. That worked. Let me see if I can rib the bottom. Uh, Diane, I don't know. Um, I've tried an ounce so far, and it didn't. It slows down when I press on it, but it doesn't stop it. Um, I'm using super soft clay, so um, softer than most people get it out of the bag. My bag clay is very soft because the the company that mixed it uh, was unfamiliar with the recipe and added a lot of water. So um, I would say uh, the consistency of when you flop a pot on the big wheel and you wedge it back up and that almost sticky, that would be perfect. And then you could go maybe a little bit heavier than, than a pound, or sorry, than an ounce. Um, Diane, if you stick around for a little bit, I'll try a, a two ounce piece for you and see, um, and at least give you my impression of it, see how that works. a little heavy on the bottom but maybe I can trim some of that away but let's dry it out that's as, that's as far as I want to go with shaping it
So, so far, this was my other bottle, so about a few minutes ago. And then this is my first piece, a little, little bowl. I trimmed it on the bottom. It's going to be hard to figure out how to make the little handles. I want to make um, miniature tea sets and stuff. And I think I can make mini spouts, but I'm not sure about handles. Those are going to be so tiny. And my hands are big. So I'm going to have to start using like chopsticks or something. So Diane, let me know if you're able to stick around for a bit. Otherwise, if you can, I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing and maybe you and I can get together another time. <clears throat> Ooh, um, looking for, I guess, I guess that is the one I'm looking for. Okay, hey, Diane, so when I've done this one, I'll put a two ounce piece on. See there, it's really slowing the wheel down, but I've dried this, this clay at the bottom out really dry, like leather hard. Shaping it up a little bit nicer. I really am very surprised that that uh, tar paper bat stayed on even though it's off center. There, we're off center. Okay. I wonder if I can fix that. Really? That's well, gonna make it a lot harder to paint that, isn't it? really not trimming it, it's more burnishing it, which is okay, nothing wrong with that. Alrighty, let's get some color on this guy. I really like the previous one with the black, so I'm going to do that again. My black is kind of dried out here, so I need to muck with it a bit. The light's changed in here. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. Don't want to 
waste any. You see that color change so quick? That's amazing. Wish my big pots did that. So slow on a bigger pot. Flip on the overhead light for me. Ta-da! All right, so I'll just lift up the edge of my tar paper bat, which ended up off center from when I was centering the clay. Cut under it with my wire. And there's my second little bottle. So a little bottle, little bottle. Oh, the little kiln is a, a little, I think it's a Paragon. It's a enameling kiln or test kiln. It's um, some kind of uh, uh, formed material. It kind of looks like plaster or cement, but I know it's not that. It has to be something that's more fireproof with the elements embedded in it and the inside. Um, and you, you lift it up off of the, the surface um, 
and I don't know how hot it goes to. I haven't never used it. But it would certainly bisque and it would certainly low fire. It's so anyway, there's my three little pieces. You want a sandwich? Uh yeah, please. So set these guys aside. And I promised Diane I was gonna see how how much I could put on here. So I need to clean my wheel. I'll try, Diane, I'll try and remember, um, they, they still make those kilns, so I'll try and remember to look it up online when I'm all done here and show you what I'm talking about. I got mine used and then it's, you know, how, I don't know how old it is, but it doesn't look like it was used much. I feel like I'd like to keep this clean under here. So just humor me for a moment. I hope there's a bushing in there that protects the bearing. But I don't want a lot of gunk building up in there and getting in the in the shaft works. It's holding up really well. Hey, thank you. Just set it up here, and I'll, I'll grab it when I'm done. Thank you. Um, all right. So here's my scale. Uh, I've done an ounce so far. So let's try two ounces. Let's go completely off the charts and try two ounces. is um, cheap digital scale. It's good to uh, two decimal places. Two point four nine, that's too much. Two, 19.86, 1.993, two ounces exactly. Probably couldn't do that again if you paid me. Okay, two ounces. Smaller than a golf ball. So I'm going to put a bit of extra effort into sticking this down and pre-centering it. I think this is something that you wouldn't want to just plop down a weird shaped ball and try and push it into the center. Because even if the machine will do it, I wouldn't want to burn out the, the motor unnecessarily, so let me get it as centered as I can. That looks fairly, fairly centered. Now I'm going to give it as fast as it'll go. Hi, JR. This is going to take some different finger learning, too. Okay, so I am not stopping the wheel. It's making some squawking. Hi, Dawn.
Wow, I am impressed. Two ounces. Ooh. Alrighty. So, slow it down a little bit. It sure does, yeah. Alrighty. Mm, slow it down a bit more to open up. Larger piece of clay throws off more water. So part of the challenge is, is supporting the machine as I'm coming up that, that tall. Wow, I am so impressed with this. trying different ways of pulling up because my finger just doesn't want to do it. That didn't work.
breathe. That. All right, trying lots of different ways of cutting these guys. There, that worked without distorting the dickens out of it. I really like to flare the tops of these guys. So the body is not as thin as I would like it to be. So down here is pretty heavy, but I think I can fix that with some trimming, which means I didn't get the height out of it that I had hoped. You know? So with practice, I could probably do a much larger piece, but it, that two ounces is nowhere near the, the limit of this wheel. I think the limit is more in um, controlling it, because when I'm working up here, down here the machine can move. However, that being said, let me turn it off for a second. So that being said, this, this part here pops off and you can get into the works underneath. Well, Don, I'm going much low tech, lower tech than that. Um, drill a hole through the bottom and just bolt it to a board and that would stop it from moving around. It would make it a little more unwieldy for storage and travel, but um, I'm sure you can figure something out to make it detachable. Um, or Here's an idea, a couple of uh, really strong um, uh, rare earth magnets inside and then just have a metal plate under you. That, that would work and then you just pop it off. That, that, would, that would hold it, that would be enough. So um, not insurmountable. Bit of a nuisance, but um, certainly something that if you wanted to uh, make miniatures and you wanted to have the the cheap option because um, this is cheap this is like under thirty five dollars you are um, you're going to be able to do a lot with it all right so <laughs> I make a heck of a mess though that's um, the bigger piece of clay really splashed and splattered and all kinds of stuff
Um, I'm in Freeport, Illinois. I've got a studio in downtown Freeport where I teach classes and make pots. I want that to be my career, but I'm not there yet. I still have to have an outside job. Thank goodness, because right now my studio is closed. Not making any money. You know, this is where I get in so much trouble. I fiddle to get something just right. And I tell my students all the time not to fiddle. So, I don't know why I do it. But this edge just looked too sharp to me. Alright, let's, let's do some trimming. Trimming really does reveal the pot, doesn't it? There, that's where it's really bogging it down. So I'm at the lowest setting possible, and cutting under this, I was able to stop the wheel. tap it. doesn't tell me anything. So this would be an awesome miniature face jug. A couple little handles on it and then go to town with the sculpting. I'm gonna have so much fun. So much fun! Definitely more trimming to a bigger piece of clay, too. And every little thing knocks it off center. Makes it harder to paint. It's got a little bit of a lift off the table.
of this. This tool I found really just burnishes it. It doesn't do much more. I'm not going to paint that one. I think I'm just going to leave that one and, and glaze it properly. This gives you a lot of opportunity to play with colors and shapes and all kinds of great stuff. So there is my little two ounce jar. I'll put this guy back up here. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna take a break now and eat a sandwich, have a drink. So I just want to review, recap, show off a little bit. So here are my achievements for the last uh, however long I've been doing this. Um, so three little jars and a little bowl. The bowl was the first. It's kind of wonky. I'm probably not going to keep it. Um, but I trimmed the bottom, which was a bit of a challenge. Uh, I colored it. And then these are my little bottles on my tar paper bats. So that's that's my second uh, trip around with this guy. Uh, I'm going to do some more, obviously. Uh, message me if there's anything you want to see me do on another uh, subsequent video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me um, in these crazy times. I, I really appreciate the company. Uh, fellow potters, uh, friends, family, uh, interested and disinterested parties. So... Uh, Stay safe and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye.